hope you're enjoying International Women's Day Pie Ladies special. My talk's Action Celebrate, Celebrate Your Progress with GitHub Actions. And I wanted to start with this quote from Oprah, where she says, the more you praise and celebrate your life, the more there is in life to celebrate. And I think that's very true. And this is something that I would like to get better at. And I would like to encourage and hopefully motivate you to also get better at taking time to celebrate all the small and like larger successes in life. So my name is Jessica Green. I'm a back-end focus engineer at Ecosia, the search engine that plants trees. I'm a career changer. I was formerly a coffee roaster and before that a camera assistant. Here is a very old picture of me holding up the clapperboard on one of the movies I worked on. And not having a traditional path, but maybe also this is relatable for many people, I found there was a lot of bumps along the road. And something that I could have been a lot better at was just really taking time to reflect on the actual successes that I was having. Um, whether that was closing a PR up, finding a bug, fixing a bug, uh, finishing a course that I had been doing, or to be honest at the moment, getting out of bed, going to my desk and working every day. I wish I had taken more time to celebrate. Um, and because I'm not particularly good at reminding myself to do that, I thought it'd be kind of cool if I could find an automated way. Um, and maybe there was something existing already uh, out there that I could use. And that's when I thought of GitHub Actions. So you may already come across GitHub Actions. It's something they added in the last year or two years. It provides a way to automate your software development workflows on GitHub. And this includes a lot of those traditional continuous integration, continuous deployment tasks, such as running test suites, building applications and publishing packages. But it also allows us to do things like automated greetings, labeled pull requests, or even creating cron jobs to provide uh, to perform scheduled tasks. So there's a lot of possibility in there. And it's a tale of two parts. So the first part we're going to look at is the workflows. These are the automated processes that run on your repository. And workflows can have many GitHub actions. After that, we're going to have a look at the actions themselves. And these can be ones that you've written, or they could be someone else's work that you can take. There's a marketplace, actually, that lists all of the different actions available. So let's get started. Okay, so there's a few things we need to think about here. When do we actually want to trigger the workflow? So what should be the event? Should it be any time codes pushed or would we rather just do it when a pull request is opened? And then we need to think about the jobs that are actually gonna make up this workflow. Um, where should those jobs run? So we need to provide them with a machine, maybe a Linux uh, distribution virtual machine. We're going to have a list of steps, uh, which is the tasks that each job is going to run. And within those, we're going to probably have some run commands that the step executes. This is a repository that I created especially for this talk. Um, it's the Pi Ladies International Women's Day program. It's rather small. A Python program which allows you to add PyLadies chapters and then it will print out a special International Women's Day message. It was a lot of fun actually to write. And you'll see here at the root level, I've added the, the directory .github and within that the directory workflows. And that's where all the configuration for this is going to live. So let's have a look in there. Currently, we've got two files, lint.yaml and test.yaml. And although I am notoriously a dreadful speller, in this case, actually, it was intentional. Uh, I wanted to demonstrate that you can actually spell YAML with an A or with an outer name, uh, and it will pick it up either way. So let's take a look at the lint. Uh, this lint workflow you'll see is going to be triggered on a push. Uh, so we have the on there. Then we have just one job in this list, uh, which is the Python lint. It's going to run on Ubuntu latest, and it has a number of steps. A couple of steps for like checking out the code, setting up the environment. Here we're specifying that we want to use Python 3.9. And then we have some run commands for installing the dependency, which is PyCode style in this case, and then also running that linter on the code itself. Looking at the test file, pretty much the same thing, uh, just a slightly different command that we've got going on down here. To be honest, these could have been in one file um, as two jobs, and I just split them out mainly to demonstrate the spelling difference. So I thought that's cool. We can lint. We can test. I'd like to do something else, something a bit more exciting. Um, one thing I thought could be cool was to actually comment on a PR, uh, celebrating or, you know, celebrating that person's success when they open a pull request. 
turns out I wasn't the first person to have this idea. And when I looked in the marketplace, I found quite a number of actions that allow you to comment on PRs. And I took this one from Haru Pai. Uh, you can see that I have to pass through the GitHub token from my GitHub secrets, and that's to be able to have permission to comment on the PR. And I'm also passing it through this file name, which is the template.md. It's a markdown file, and I can use that to specify what the comment should be that it posts. And that file is living inside the workflow directory also. And here you are. Uh, I opened a pull request with this uh, workflow added and boom, the GitHub Actions bot gives me a lovely message with a nice GIF telling me to celebrate and get to feel good uh, for opening this PR. And I thought then the next step would be really to create my own action. So what would be something a little bit more complex um, that I couldn't find out the box that I wanted to do. So I decided to create uh, this repository actions to celebrate. And that's because you need to have these three main files at the root level. So I would recommend having a repository per action. You'll see there's the action.yaml, the Docker file, and the main.py. That's gonna correspond to these three main components of the action. So runs is gonna configure exactly the path to the action code. The action code in this case is gonna be main.py and the application used to execute the code, which in this case is gonna be Docker, which is why we need the Docker file. It can be done in JavaScript or shell script, but the nice thing about using Docker, it meant that I was able to write the actual code in Python. Uh, we're also gonna to need to configure any inputs that we need. And these are of course optional, but in this case, we want to connect to Twitter. So we're gonna need some of the access and secret tokens. And um, we can also have outputs, so data that the action is going to set and return. So here's the action.yaml, and you can see it in action. Um, you'll see there's the name, description, and the author. We have the inputs. We have the output. We have the runs, which, as I mentioned, we're using Docker in this case. There's also the branding, so you can add an icon and a color should you want to publish to the GitHub Actions Marketplace. Here's the Docker file, uh, very small, as you can see. We build it with a slim Python image. Uh, we copy our code into it. We run pip install. I decided to do this in line, but I could have also equally done it with a requirements text. But as I only use these two libraries, I felt I'd just keep it in line here. Uh, we move that across into a distroless image. And at the bottom here, you can see the command that we run runs our main.py script. So let's put it together. The idea here was I wanted to tweet my appreciation. So I wanted to have a workflow on my repository, which when someone made a pull request would use this action to send out a tweet to celebrate that person's work. So first of all, I'd set up the secrets uh, and that is done in the repository settings. And you can see here, I'm passing through all of the different access and secret tokens that Twitter is gonna require. And I went ahead and opened a pull request to add this. Uh, once I create the pull request, you'll see down the bottom that the checks appear, it can take a second. And on the right hand side here, you can see the details which we can click on and it will start to show us the workflow running in action. Uh, this is gonna set it up and it's gonna run through all of the steps of our Docker file. So while it's doing that, I'd just like to take the opportunity to say a massive thanks to the organizers and to everybody watching today. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out uh, on Twitter, it's at CP Pioneer or on GitHub. And if we check back in, uh, and it can take a while, for example, if you are needing to pull a lot of different dependencies. So you do wanna be a little bit mindful um, of what you're putting into this. But once it runs through, we should see that it completes the job. Yeah, there we go. And uh, now we should be able to go over to Twitter and have a look and there it is. So success. Uh, in this case, I decided to highlight the user who had opened the PR, which is me and the repository that it was done to. So don't forget to celebrate. Here's a couple of links of the things that I've mentioned in this talk and also the code. I'll make these slides available to the organizers uh, today or after the event. And I hope you have a great rest of International Women's Day. Mm -hmm.